Do video games cause cancer? If that question confuses you, angers you, or even scares you, that's good. The intention of the question is working as planned. Cancer is a cellular disease where abnormal cells are present. These abnormal cells divide uncontrollably and have the ability to spread throughout the body, destroying normal body tissue. It's a disease that ravages the body and is the second leading cause of death in the world. It can be caused by a variety of external factors, which are named carcinogens, but can also be caused by mistakes in the DNA, which can be completely random. And so, why would people even ask the question, do video games cause cancer? Is there a link between cancer and video games? Despite the low levels of radiation you get from electronics in general? No, there's no direct link between cancer and video games. The question, do video games cause cancer, is a common question used to demonize the hobby that billions of people enjoy. This is in line with questions like, do video games cause violence? Do video games cause depression? Do video games cause ADHD, anxiety, stress, headaches, etc.? With most of these questions, playing video games can have a correlation with them, but video games are never the only cause. It seems silly to think that playing video games is the sole cause for many of these issues. But cancer? That's another beast to tackle. In 2009, my brother-in-law, Wilson, rented out Left 4 Dead for the Xbox 360. I was just finishing middle school, and that game terrified me. Playing on expert mode, hearing the tank sound made us scream while we played in the dark. It was such a fun time in my life. Wilson also shared plenty of other games with me, including one of my favorite games of all time, Bioshock. Playing Bioshock as a teen was also terrifying, but it was one of the most influential gaming experiences I've ever had. It really shifted my narrative from, games are just mindless things to play, to games are works of art and can be really thought provoking. I can confidently say that I would not be the person I am today if I'd never shared those moments with him. It was in 2010 on a trip to Disneyland that Wilson felt weak and the color from his lips was gone. We recommended that he see a doctor and he was found to have leukemia, cancer of the blood. It was in the happiest place on earth that we discovered the disease that would plague him for two more years. And those two years were really rough on him. As he began his chemotherapy treatments, I quickly saw him transform into a skinny and frail version of his former self. I saw him suffering and desperately wanting his health back. It was terrible. During those years, the one way we could still connect the one way we could enjoy our time together was through video games. I remember having a blast playing sports champion with the PlayStation Move on PS3. Our favorite was disc golf, but he couldn't play for long as he got tired easily. I also remember walking into the hospital room one day and seeing him play Batman Arkham Asylum after I had beaten it the previous year. He was happy and we bonded over how great that game was. Video games often were a way that we could still bond, despite what he was going through. And that question, do video games cause cancer, infuriates me. There have been countless studies and experiments showcasing the benefits of video games. They help with cognitive function, memory, multitasking, spatial awareness, and more. Video games can help create bonds between players increase social interaction with other gamers, especially in cooperative or multiplayer games, and can lead to some lifelong memories. And the best part about video games is that they also provide an escape from reality. Dealing with cancer is one of the toughest things I've seen anyone go through. It destroys all sense of who you were or who you wanted to be. It's extremely painful. And video games can help with the pain of suffering through all this. 
and they can give you an idea of what may come after. That Dragon Cancer is an autobiographical video game showcasing Ryan and Amy Greens' experience of raising their son Joel, who was diagnosed with terminal cancer at 12 months old. It's a heartbreaking presentation of their complex emotions and deep dive into the Greens' personal life as they turn to each other and their faith to get through this difficult time. I hate this room. I didn't used to. For a, for a moment, it was an adventure. I was cast as the compassionate and caring father, holed up with his fragile son in a small cleft in the rocks. The storm raging, waves ripping at the sharp black rocks below, and enveloped in my arms, he feels safe, and I am holding him firmly, trying not to slip. Because if you hold tight enough, Nothing will take him. Right? From portraying the feeling of an overwhelming sinking feeling, as if you were weathering through a nasty storm, to hearing Joel's painful screams as he suffered through his hospital treatments and severe dehydration. He won't stop crying. I don't blame him. He feels miserable. I hate that we're here. I hate that he's sick. I just want him to feel better. Oh, he won't stop crying. That Dragon Cancer is an agonizing and beautiful showcase of the battle with cancer. It also serves as a digital memorial to Joel, as he lost his life to cancer at only five years old. After finishing that dragon cancer, I don't see Joel as a frail kid, weak and afraid. I was able to see so much of what made Joel a joy to be around. I saw Joel full of life, despite the end of it. These video games are an amazing way to share these memories. Whether it's being able to experience life with the Green family and seeing their experiences with Joel, to even just being Batman and beating the living hell out of some random thugs. Video games are an escape. When I saw my brother-in-law Wilson playing Batman Arkham Asylum, I didn't see him as frail, struggling to do his normal routine. I saw him as Batman, powerful and unstoppable. He was a superhero. And video games helped create that image of him for me, one that I will never forget. Not even after Wilson passed away from his leukemia in 2012. Video games have been a huge part of my life. It's an amazingly fun hobby and a strong passion of mine. During my time with Wilson, I never once thought that playing video games would have any negative effects. I had so many amazing memories thanks to the games and we were having a blast. So the question of do video games cause cancer? never entered my mind. Thankfully, there's no reason to be worried about that question, but I do find myself wondering from time to time. If there was a possibility, if you had the smallest hint that your passion could make you sick, would you drop that passion? Would you stop doing what you love, what makes you come alive, if you knew what it would bring? Miki Matsubara was born in 1959 in Osaka, Japan, to a father who was a hospital board member and a mother who was a jazz singer. She was a smart and dedicated student, and at the age of 17, instead of going to college, she left to Tokyo to pursue her dream of being a singer and composer. She writes, I didn't give up going to college. I chose the most important thing for me, music. In Tokyo, she spent her life singing in karaoke bars and U.S. military bases. One day, at the age of 19, 
her voice gained attention and she was able to have her first debut single. Stay with me, Stay with me is Miki Matsubara's first and perhaps her most well-known song to date. In 1979, this song sold 300,000 copies and it received major awards. From there, her fame skyrocketed, allowing her to create music for commercials, anime, and more. After a few years, she formed her own band and devoted her life to her passion for music. For several years, she chased her dreams and goals for success with her music. She made several hits and built her whole entire career but nothing was as big as her debut single, Stay With Me. That song received a revival in 2020, with TikToks of Japanese mothers recognizing the song, Stay with me. and dozens of covers of that same song. Stay with me. By chasing her passions, Miki Matsubara was able to create a timeless masterpiece and her music is still enjoyed by millions, including myself. But in 2000, something drastically changed in her career. She sent a vague message saying, I cannot continue my music career due to an uncontrolled thing. I canceled everything like telephone, cell phone, and email, so you don't have to reply to this. I hope you will have a wonderful life. Miki. She had dropped everything, her career, her music, her passions, all at once. She burned her favorite musical scores and records. She cut any connection with music for which she had devoted everything. She stopped doing what she loved in an instant, without explaining anything. Later it would be learned that she was diagnosed with end-stage cervical cancer, with only three months left to live. Distraught over her disease, she sent a letter to her cousin. Please forget the time when I sang songs and composed music. I think my lifestyle in this era brought me this disease. So I reset everything that prevents me from going forward. It reminds me of my weakness. Miki had believed that her lifestyle, her perfectionism, and her choice to sacrifice everything for her passion was the cause of her cancer. For her, she dropped everything because she believed that lifestyle was making her sick and she felt that she had dropped it too late in her life. Despite how much joy her music brought the world and people around her, she gave it all up. Her music, her passion, because she wanted to live. In 2004, roughly four years after her initial diagnosis, Miki Matsubara passed away at the age of 44. At her private family funeral, her husband read her final letter. I realized many things for the first time I was diagnosed. If possible, I want to be healthy and restart my life. If there was a possibility, if you had the smallest hint that your passion made you sick, would you drop that passion? Would you stop doing what you love? What makes you come alive if you knew what it brought? Would you still enjoy your life? Cancer is terrifying and death even more. But so is not fully living your life and someone who desperately wants to restart their life hasn't fully lived. Despite Wilson passing away over 10 years ago, I don't live with any regrets for my time that I spent with him and the times that we spent playing games together. In fact, I would have loved to spend even more time with him and play so much more, even if there were negative side effects. I am grateful for the experiences I've had with him for the short time that I knew him. Dropping everything in your life that makes you happy should not be a cure for any disease. Whatever makes you happy 
will always stay with you. Early on in her diagnosis, Miki Matsubara moved back with her parents so she could spend her final days with them, and her parents tried to do all that they could for her. Her father knew she wanted to keep continuing her music career, but she could no longer cope with the inspiration she was getting to create more music now that she's no longer healthy. During those times, she desperately wanted her normal life with music back, but she had dropped music entirely in the hopes that she could get better. Would you have done the same? Or would you have tried to cling onto your passions until the very end? In her final moments with her father, she would tell him, I want to do many things. I'm still thinking of them, so I don't want to die.